What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey Web and Whatnot with myself, Robbie the Wagner, and my co-host, as always, Charles William Carpenter the Third. With uh, for the rest of this, no, no, no. For the rest of this, I'm going to be Barbie, though. It's going to be like on, okay, yeah, on brand with Ken. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We, we've got a special guest today, uh, Ken Wheeler, who I believe is the new CEO of OpenAI. What? That's correct. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> I'll be interim. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets that job for at least twelve hours. Yeah, yeah. I think over this last weekend that happened. Turn the place around. Mm -hmm. Get it on track. AGI coming. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you want to give a quick intro into who you are and what you do, Ken. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm Ken Wheeler. I wrote a bunch of open source back in the day, some of which was helpful. <laughs> and um, then uh, I wasn't allowed to write open source anymore. Kind of pivoted to just talking shit on Twitter. It's I would fun. love to write open source, but I still write code every single day. Um, and I tweet about it, but just don't really release much. I do a bunch of talks and conferences too. So, And you are allowed to do that. I am. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, subject to some of your previous open source work before. I don't, I don't know if it's... I pronounce My it Urkel. Yep, yep, you should. Urkel, yeah, Urkel was the shit. Still is, really. Yeah, a lot of people like it. <laughs> Shut up, Siri. Um, yeah, like uh, we've well, done a lot of work with Formidable in the past, and I know you used to be a Formidable. Oh, yeah, I, I'll not fuck around yeah. just like you too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at you. You have a fancy glass. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It's a you have a fancy glass. I have a problem. <laughs> it's, a Glen, it's a Glen Cairn. Um, all righty. Well, it matches my hat. So, yeah. speaking of whiskey, today we're having Basil Hayden Straight Bourbon Whiskey, non-age stated, 80 proof, you man. Uh, and the mash bill is 63% corn, 27% rye, and 10% malted barley. Where are you getting these stats? Uh, the internets. Oh, okay. He yeah. has all of them memorized the for every whiskey, actually. I, yeah, can you imagine how bad that would be? Do you guys drink this shit? Uh, I have drank this shit. I drank many shits. Yeah. I, uh, not literal shit. Cause that's disgusting. But yeah, uh, I remember I was a bartender when this stuff came out first and they, it was a uh, beam released the small batch collection. So it was like this knob Creek bakers and bookers all at the same time. Uh -huh. So I had it back in the day. I must've been like 2000. What's your daily driver? Um, I would say the things that I go for most regular, I mean, I have a whiskey podcast, so I have a lot of <laughs> shit all the time. Yeah. Every week I get new whiskeys, but, um, we do Sagamore rye a bunch, like they're regular old rye. It's like 35, 40 bucks. It's a pretty good one. I'll pick up a, uh, a Buffalo trace. It's like 25 yeah. bucks at CVS. Buffalo trace is lovely. I drink that a lot on planes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like good. It's easy drinker. It's low cost. Yeah. And I it's think hard it's to beat like the high value for the quality. It really is. There's a really funny thing that happens every single time I'm on a plane. <laughs> okay. And um, so I'll, I'll usually weasel my way into first class through a variety of techniques. <laughs> and then when I do, I ask them for a red wine and a bourbon. Okay. And most of the time, they'll just bring you a red wine and a bourbon. Mm -hmm. And it's usually trace right so i'm like i'm like yeah red wine and a buffalo trace right yeah but i've actually had it before where they put the fucking bourbon into the red wine <laughs> wow <laughs> I'm like, that <laughs> i'm like that? what are you doing <laughs> whoever wants that like that's Ugh. the logical outcome and that is how you end up becoming a flight attendant no i'm just kidding no, i'm not no. yeah i'm not uh, i had to make the bad joke <laughs> okay let's do a little tasting here yeah. before i'm not even you know i barely even had I'm ready. any and I'm already how, how do you properly taste whiskey? Because I feel like I'm uh, more of a, a drinker than a taster. Right. Uh, so a couple of different it. things. You chew it first to uh, chew it. You want to uh, just kind of chew it in your mouth a little bit. And you want to activate the salivatory glands. Swallow there. Then you can. You, it's like wine, actually, in many ways. I mean, I'm sure you've been to, like wine tastings and the stuff. The old front to back. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, you start with a little like breathe into your mouth, but put your nose on it. I don't think it's properly decanting straight out of the bottle. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, how much oxygen does it yeah. need at that point? So uh, that's that's kind of the first part. Do the nose and then, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really smell like much to me. I don't know if that's because my nose is not great right now or what, but. I get a little like sweet, almost like maple-y on the nose, but then mm. it is kind of weak there. It is a no. lower proof whiskey, so you're going to have that happen. It always has a sort of corn leafy flavor to mm. me so if i was to like have a little yeah, leafy sweet corn and a little leafiness in there I, yeah a little a bit of adjective. like bitter 
Yeah, some kind of part of the mm. plant that's yeah. like not the part you would want to eat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the plant, I guess. Well, yeah. uh, it does have a little bitter on the finish, like on the back of the tongue for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, no, that's true. Now that you mention it. Yeah. You know, you can you can also be suggestive in tasting notes and stuff, too. I found that like I'll start drinking something and, you know, Robbie will be like, oh, this kind of tastes like a Twizzler or whatever. And that. Oh, now I taste that somehow a little bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, dried apricots, I think, is what you should be tasting. That, really that's what Chuck tastes every time suggest- he tastes any whiskey. I think his tongue's yeah. baseline is apricots. Dried apricots. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also eat a handful of apricots before. <laughs> Did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't mind them, but I don't seek them out per se. Um, Apricots are delicious. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Dried fruits in general. It's kind of nice. You know, this whole like, you know, you get a handful of that. You go hiking. It feels very natural. It's less stingy than some of the other ones that I have. Yeah. 80 proof is going to kind of be like that. This is a little more. Have you ever had Widow Jane? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very tasty. Very stingy. Yeah. That's one. Is that one that you go to on the regular? Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that I drink with regularity because you know the way that I drink, but if I have like a, a nicer bottle to hold on to. Yeah. Then that or Jefferson. Now, do you guys smoke this shit? S- smoke whiskey? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I have not. Oh, you mean so, like do that whole thing where you like, yeah. yeah. And I have had those like smoked cocktails yeah. before with that. Yeah. That's, that's good. Pretty good. That's interesting. So I've had thing. that before where like they go and they smoke the old fashioned for you. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I bought this smoking thing. Right. It's like a, it's like a little electric thing yeah. and you like have a little torch and you rip it like a bowl kind of, <laughs> Yeah. but then it like blows it and there's like a little like a, uh, like tube with a disc that goes on top of the cup mm-hmm. um, and fills it up and then you kind of let it chill there for a minute and shit. And then just the whiskey itself gets a little smoky. It's nice. I got like this whole thing. It's like a fucking dome. You can like put over like cheeses. Yeah. I've definitely had that like at a cocktail yeah. bar before. Well, I haven't put it over cheeses yet. No, I've just I've literally just smoked whiskey. Just with it. smoke whiskey. Maybe you could smoke the cheeses too. Yeah, that'd be kind right? of interesting. Smoke cheese. Or meat? Yeah, why not? Pretty smoke before you, you know? smoke the meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. So I think that adds a very interesting element. And see, that's the whole thing about whiskey: is it like it tastes this way, just plain, just neat. You can add a couple of drops of water. Now it tastes a little different. You can add some ice in there. You can get something Hold on, else. Just one second. What? Yo, I'm on a podcast right now. What are you doing? <laughs> I am on this podcast for at least another 50 minutes. Stop banging on the door. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Kids these days, you know, no respect. You need to have an on-air sign. Then you'll be set. I need an on-air sign. Wouldn't that be sick? It yeah. would be pretty cool. Get that shit for the outside of the bedroom, too. Yeah. Who said that? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> on-air, in-air. Then you're in somewhere. I don't know. You can have that. If I'm in there, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get serious here. We have a highly sophisticated rating system here. It is zero to eight tentacles. Zero being horrible shit you're going to throw out. Eight being amazing. Now you're going to throw everything else out in the liquor cabinet. And then obviously four is just is fine. It's not good. It's not bad. Whatever else. So what what are your feelings on this one? I know this is a regular for you, so you probably me. Yeah, this this basil, oh, right? You you're know a, what? You're a basil, basil yeah. bra. Wait, wait. You said zero to eight. Mm-hmm. Zero to eight. We're engineers, right? We're z- zero yeah. based indexing. Yeah. No, that's fair. Oh, I don't know. Probably somewhere around a five, mm. maybe a six. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it's 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 extremely drinkable. Yeah. You know, it's not like the the finest shit on the shelf. It's got a nice bottle. It's not bottle. bad. No, no. It's a it's a nice bottle. I wouldn't feel feel bad serving it to people. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Like look, look nice and a little like gathering. I'm not, gathering. you know, I I drink whiskey like it's fucking Gatorade. So <laughs> you know, you can't just go buy bottles of Pappy and fucking hydrate with that shit. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why this is a daily driver for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, that's and fair. Pappy's just a flex anyway. Yeah. I'm just going to text my wife so this kid stops fucking running into my door. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you do that, Robbie can give his feedback. Yeah. Um, I think this is a good bourbon-y bourbon. Like, it's similar to Buffalo Trace in that it's like, it just, like, there's nothing necessarily bad about it. It's just kind of middle of the road-ish. A um, little pricier than Buffalo Trace. So, for that, I might 
lower. I'd say a five is probably good for it. Uh, I think we did six or seven for Buffalo Trace, so say five. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo Trace punches well above its its weight, uh, and yeah. And there you go. Just uh, comparing it to things like Buffalo Trace or Weller One Hundred Seven or other things that I think are like super tasty. When pretty much buy every time I see is, them. Is this above or below Makers for you? <sighs> makers is a weeded. Mm-hmm. I think it's this would probably be above for me. I personally consider it above. Yeah, I think it's. But you prob- went to say below. I'm trying. I'd to- love to hear why. Okay, well, so I would put it below Makers 46 for sure because the 46 is just. Oh, delicious. we didn't say anything about. Yeah, 46. Now, plain old Makers is is a solid one that I would not be ashamed to like pick up at you know pick up on the way to a party or something like that too. But this is this is kind of fancy looking. I'm going to put this at a four. I think it's kind of equal to regular makers for me. Hmm. It's just the, the problem here is the proofing. So makers is 90 proof. This is 80 proof. And I want a little more punch. Mm. I want a little more hug if I'm sipping this stuff straight. But I mean, you can or you want to finish the whole bottle. So yeah, that, that's a good that's a good fit for you. Then, you know, this is like it's kind of like, you know, they have those session beers that are like four yeah. percent or something like that. This is like a session whiskey. That's, that's, that's how I feel thing. about it. You always get in arguments with guys on the internet, right? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you know, you post a picture, you're just enjoying a Coors Light, mm-hmm. right? And they're like, have fun drinking the piss. You call that a fucking beer, right? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I am playing fucking horseshoes, right? I'm not going to drink six IPAs and then. Exactly. Those are the guys that I was going to say exactly that. Those are the guys that want to put like a, a, a handful of fucking hops in their yeah. mouth. Fuck that. You know, Don't and get me wrong. Like- I like IPAs. You drink a six or IPA in like a three hour period, you're fucking having a bad time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. I don't like IPAs. I used to. I just got sick of them. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a peaty scotch, like smacking me in the mouth all the time. I can sip I, on I a, like a little bit scotch. of scotch. I can sip on a little bit of scotch, but I don't want, I don't want three, four drinks of that. This I could have three, four. No problem. You know I know bourbons are like that. I can kill that. We have like these uh, like farm breweries around us. Right, you show up and there's like shit for the kids to play on, and yeah. they have all their beers. And I, I I've been going with sours lately. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with a sour. No, I, I like a sour. sour. I think a sour is unique and and interesting. Yeah, yeah. tasty. Yeah, egregiously high alcohol content. <laughs> also a win. You can feel like a man having a sour, so that feels good. So I'm frozen. I don't know, Robbie. Are you there? I am here. I think you? it's my internet that is fucked up. We're really gonna just like. Move up. Well, we can move on without you too. I, I mean, he's frozen, but he's sitting there pretty agreeable looking. So <laughs> mm-hmm. he seems happy about how things are going for him currently. That's good. Yeah. yeah he Just moved continue. into a new house. I'll, I'll jump back in. Awesome some internet point. connection. That's okay. Whereabouts? Um, and well, we're not supposed to tell you these things, right? We're, yeah, we, no, that's we're fair. Preserving privacy. I said whereabouts and he left. You said you're in Phoenix. I'm in Phoenix. He's in Virginia, like outside the DC area. Yeah. Yeah. So like the, I'm in D- Wall Township, New Jersey. I'll give everybody the fucking address oh, if they want. If you want, go for it. How about your phone number? So we can text you too. Go ahead. No, you, your phone number. Yeah, I don't have your phone number. 908-692-4281. Perfect. Somebody, our one listener will text you. So I mean, I mean, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and he's in Great Falls, Virginia. That's enough to like. That's uh, cool. In that. I love Phoenix. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice right now. 75 degrees today. You know, I had to put on a light jacket. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't golf. Light jacket, but, 75 degrees. You don't golf? Well, no, I don't golf. I, mean, I hate that Why? shit because I don't like being bad at things. Oh, it's not about being good or bad. It's about fucking around on the carts with the boys. No, I don't know. I can do that doing other things. Now, Top Golf is that. That's I'm okay with that. I can like fuck around with the boys, do that, decent food, you know. It's like top golf, except you're driving. I'll drive the cart. I don't know. I I've golfed once. I hated it. I think we went through like twelve boxes of balls. It was just like was no. the person who you went with competitive? They were good. It was yeah. actually with Robbie and then two other guys who were good. Yeah. No, you got to go with a, a, a ragtag. People don't care. Bunch of rascals yeah the next time i yeah, mean like me and my brothers my brother's like smoking blunts on the cart like we're, running, <laughs> we're fucking running the carts into other carts and shit it's, right yeah. right yeah well that's kind of yeah i could maybe get down with that when i'm in new jersey next time or you come Just here working on the green I'll, cursing screaming yelling it's it, fucking amazing yeah is there good golf you can't do jersey? that shit at nice golf places no you, know, you go like you know you go on like a golf vacation show up places yeah no you, you want to go on a public up. course or something like that right yeah i'm in like crocs and sweatpants mm. 
right? And like my brothers and like fucking Tim's and right. Yeah, you can't wear Tim's on the green. No, no. I mean, I I, I think I went like middle ground. Uh, we had collars and stuff. It was a nice place. I think it was called like the Boulders or something. There's a ton of really nice ones here. Did they have that little thing that drives up with the drinks? Oh yeah, yeah. They have the yeah. the the drink cart girls or whatever ladies mm-hmm. ladies uh can respect that but yeah i don't know uh we'll see we'll see but mm-hmm. i don't like golf at this point um there's also amazing mexican food there here Phoenix. absolutely yeah yeah uh tons of that there that's i lived in dc for seven years and that was the biggest thing i missed is like the mexican food in dc was garbage absolutely really? horrible yeah so bad nothing I like can't the, remember what the last thing i had and i did some like random shit you know it was like some fucking colonial pub type <laughs> shit okay it yeah. was good though yeah there's plenty no, of you good know food I, there I, I i it was during covid mm. like like pure lockdown mm-hmm. and you know how hard dc lockdown yeah for sure like harder than fuck yeah and we were on our way back from south carolina which didn't give a fuck of course and so like we we stopped we decided we got like a room really nice it was a fucking room at the ritz mm. which is less fun when everything's like completely locked down yeah for sure but we ended up door dashing and the food was unfucking real but it was not mexican food i'll tell you that much yeah no definitely wasn't mexican food and it wasn't oysters well, although not oysters food. and uh taco bell taco bell is not mexican mm-hmm. food thanks for joining us robbie uh no we we're just yeah, talking about welcome. uh how there's good mexican food here but not in dc like, it's just absolute garbage. It's oh, not the yeah. thing you want there. There's a lot of other really great food. I did have one time I had a good Mexican ex- uh, food experience, but it was like this speakeasy Mexican restaurant out of somebody's, like, uh, income-based housing. Like, we went to this neighborhood, and you picked up a phone and, like, called one of the units. And if they had space for you, they dropped the keys down. And then you went up in there, and it's, like, grandma in the kitchen with a giant pot. They had some, like, uh uh-huh. Picnic That's tables fucking inside, serious, dude. and it was awesome, and that was good. But you were just like hanging out with some family, and they charged you cash for food. Like it's the most DC city experience ever, and that it's was magnificent. Good. Yeah, they got shut down eventually by you know whatever health board thing. You know, there's no regulation, so they were like, nope. Right. We heard about this. That's done. But I got to do that once, and then I went to this place. Um, I don't know, it was like off a of, like near U Street. And I can't remember the name of it. It was very popular because people like the margaritas there or something went and they basically like served me a chimichanga and it tasted like it was just like denti more beef stew in a tortilla. And the hot sauce they brought me was, uh, I don't know, it was like uh, Tabasco or something. And I was like, if it's not El Yucateco, you should leave. Right. Yeah. So I was like, do you have anything else like Tapatio, like anything else that maybe I'll, I'll take Cholula. And they were like, no, this is what we have. And you're like, you're not a Mexican restaurant. I'm out. Yeah. Garbage. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was shit. Anyway, we should talk some tech things now that Robbie's back. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah we can go time. into that yeah. and then we'll cycle should back. Should we do some lukewarm takes? <laughs> yeah, we should do some lukewarm takes. Or did takes. you already do that? No, I didn't do that. I was trying to buy you a little time to fix your shitty internet. So I don't know if it's going to stay fixed. I just restarted my routers as you do. So Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Give it a shot. I got so pissed off one time that I got business internet for my house. Mm-hmm. Nice. Straight up like T1 line right to your house. I was like, I'm fucking tired of this shit. Yep. I'm getting bu- I'm getting business internet because if it's down, they're gonna pay for it. Yeah, that's that's a good that's it a hasn't good call. been down. No, that's not bad. I've been lucky. I don't have time for this shit. When we moved back to, to Arizona, I got lucky because they had just put fiber in. I was like Lit. Yeah. So it was kind of nice. Anyway, lukewarm takes. You wanna go first, Robbie, since I've been talking a lot? Sure. Uh in TypeScript, uh, inferred types or explicit types? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, These fucking inferred hot. all day long. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm like a huge champion of that. TypeScript is good. It's better than JavaScript. Me personally, I'm a huge champion of the, the Hindley Milner type system. If you aren't familiar with it, it's uh, like OCaml, ReasonML, F sharp. And in that, right, like, like types are not, they're not just like annotations. Uh, they're they're actually like literal things as well types are a little bit more first class it's not just tacked on which when that's in a language that's fucking pretty cool stuff like if you have like polymorphic variants right like you can switch on shit and have like kind of like i don't know like monadic handling of shit which is very tight so definitely team inferred 
fuck writing types. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. writing types. Yep. That's a pretty decent one. <laughs> All right, we're going to go another direction on opinions then. How about Tailwind or Vanilla CSS? Fucking Tailwind all day long. Tailwind is the shit, and I'll Hell tell yeah. you why. Fucking Tailwind rules. And the reason that everyone's like, oh, oh well, you fucking, you don't know CSS. I know fucking CSS better than, well, yeah, a lot of people, but not fucking Jay. But, <laughs> yeah, Jay. Jay doesn't <laughs> yeah, fuck around. I mean, that's like a that's like a next tier, but you know, I've been running CSS fucking 15, 20 years. I don't know. Probably closer to 15, some shit. I don't know. How old are but you? I'm 38 years old. Yeah, baby. How old is CSS is the better question. I don't fucking know, but I've been writing it for a long time. <laughs> and what I will tell you is that you see these dudes who are like CSS artisans. They're like, oh, well, you know, if you use this particular style and, you know, you maintain this fucking bullshit technique, then fucking everything will be fine. And it'll be a, and it's like, it's like, that's fine when it's your blog. Right. Or like, a, like an open source fucking theme or some shit like that. Right? But like if you're in a company with people, people of varying skill levels in CSS, people who are trying to provide business value and not fucking code sturbate or <laughs> fucking, you know, that kind sturbate. of thing. Yeah. Like, like, like when you're like trying to get shit done, you know, you sit here and, and tiptoe around this motherfucker's CSS setup. Not just that the purge feature is the most important thing in the entire world. Right. Because it's like, like you're only including what you use. And if you work in any kind of dynamic environment where it's like you're loading apps into apps or shit like that, right. It's like super important to have a known local maximum of, of style asset sizing. Like imagine you have like a dynamic dashboard or some shit like that. Right. Where it's like you can load in, um, like some like federated module as shit. You know, and each of them has their own assets or whatever, right? Right. If it, if it's Tailwind, right? You, like like you have a known local maximum. In addition, as a library author, if you can take an implicit dependency on Tailwind, then you don't have to deal with any of this import bullshit all the time, right? Like, have you ever had to publish a library that has a dependency that's CSS as well as JS? Yeah, it's fucking it's never... devastating. Yeah, it's, it's never it's, easy it, to it work is, with. Even like internally at places, right? It's yeah. like it's just a grimy fucking thing. Especially if you're using like certain things, like it, it doesn't do like so that now you have to like copy it into the dist folder as part of an npm script before publishing, and then yeah. fucking in your readme, like not only do you import this, but you have to fucking import, you know. This <laughs> yeah, is I mean, you got CSS. So we, yeah, we have Shepard, and Shepard has uh, CSS. Like Can we do just make them import the CSS, and we do exactly <laughs> that thing. So maybe that's yeah. a bad well, experience. Well, if, it's, know, if it's but... a if it's a public thing, yeah, maybe right. But if you're working like as like an internal infrastructure team somewhere or some shit like that, yeah, right. Like you can tell everyone we're taking an implicit for dependency sure. For on sure. Tailwind, and then everyone's lives become uh, immediately easier because you can pull in everything in the entire place, and then you know the worst case scenario, you have full Tailwind. Which is statistically improbable, <laughs> right? Like most people are like, you know, P two fucking text white, call it day. Yeah, right? yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, for flex, sure. Flex row. I mean, item center. Yeah, the shorthand around flex and all of that stuff is really nice. I do like that. You guys ever get bit by that min height zero bullshit? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think so. Not in tailwind. So it's like it's like you have you have the header up top, yep. you have the footer on the bottom, and then the middle has to auto accommodate Grow. and scroll. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just flexed on you. I just want you to, you know. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to see. He, oh, he told me he's going to finish that bottle. It. And I'm going to try to make it happen. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, like, like, as, like, if you were to look at how Flexbox is supposed to work, header footer, flex zero, mm -hmm. middle flex one. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, you have to min height zero. The fucking thing won't work. I don't. I don't do a ton of CSS in general, honestly. That's um, why you like Tailwind. Bless you, yeah. sir. I do try to avoid <laughs> it. That's why I like serverless or YAML. Cert certain things are a little challenging in Tailwind. Yeah, for sure. Like, like if you're really wrangling, but let me dial it back one more time. Another huge advantage of Tailwind is that you don't get scope fucked, right? Yeah. Cascade fucked. Yeah. To be, to be precise. Mm-hmm. Have you been cascade fucked? Oh, absolutely. Billion oh, times. Yeah. Separation yeah. of concerns 
and uh, the, in the Cascade do, doesn't play well. If so. you look at the slick carousel issue list, mm-hmm. it just Cascade fucking like probably like forty three percent is is Cascade fucking, which is unfortunate, right? Yeah. Because like you know yeah. if you're working in component based systems, like I get right, like if you're like trying to do like oh. Are we going to get into like apps versus sites? I mean, we could. Mm-hmm. We don't. I, I don't okay. have it on a list, but also our list can also be be burned. It can change. It gives a yeah. shit. Well, I mean, if you have like a site, right? Like, it's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, a marketing site. There's there's times for the cascade, and there's times there's not the cascade, right? Like I'll cascade like like fucking rem shit or whatever, but like yeah. most of the time, you know, if if you're just out here writing your own shit willy nilly, somebody's like fucking. P background gray and then like your old shit is fucked. Yeah. And Tailwind prevents that, which is, you know, it's it's yeah. I love everything about it. And anybody who doesn't like it, I will fucking fight physically. <laughs> Before or after you finish this bottle. I suggest after. Before. Stone sober, yeah. six um, o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Four o'clock in the morning when I wake up, I won't even poop yet. I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take one to the gut. You might shit your pants. As you get older, you know, with like continence. Incontinence is a real, real issue. Is that real? <laughs> it is as you get older. I mean, I haven't shit my pants since I was yeah. two or something. You have to be a little older than Chuck. But, yeah, uh, you got to be a little older. I'm, I'm getting there. I, I'm I know that's that. like a way off problem. I don't know if that was like a now problem or whatever, you know. Not yet, but, you know, I'm always wondering. I'm always trying to I test mean, yeah, it. I do those clinching. I mean, yeah, through over the years. Yeah, yeah. But, but other than that, you know, and then you just do some clinching exercises and just, you know, keep it tight, bro. Like, like kegels? Yeah, but for men, because you don't, I, I don't have a vagina. It's the so. same kegel. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, guess no, it's, it's the, the same muscles. Same, same muscles. Same, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kegels for everybody. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to shake your pants. <laughs> we spend a lot of time seated, right? So we're not working all the muscles often. I enough. know. Yeah, that, you know what? That's like a that's like a big problem for me. <laughs> yeah, I literally yeah. sit here like 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah, exactly. And I've tried the uh, yeah. you, uh, you put the whole. Um, uh, you know, try to walk while your standing desk is and the balance and can board. You, can you and pay all that attention? Shit. Can you code while standing? No, I can't. I, can't. I can do meetings while standing. I, can. I cannot code. I can't do anything that's like that I don't already know the answer to. Like if I'm trying to debug something hard, but if it's like I'm going to refactor the shit out of these like 10 things and it's a repeatable process. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that on the treadmill. I could like or whatever, review yeah. PRs, or I could answer emails, yeah. or that kind of thing. But yeah. anything that actually requires, I'm like, I'm like, hold on, I, I'm not fancy enough. I don't have like the electric one. Yeah, no, I have the crank one. Oh, so I'm like, we got to get you a B flow sponsorship. Actually, we can we can work that out. They they have ones they'll send you for free. Yeah, that we can. Yeah, we have... They'll send it for free. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, they, we, they we might know one. people. Yeah, we might know people. Get the we heck out of town. We don't make money yeah. on this podcast, but we do. We get do the make hookups sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a far more a polished and uh, professional podcast, brought to you by Syntex.fm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we had David on. We've had Wes and Scott on before too. And uh, yeah, we got a hook up when they did the swag store. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the desk is really nice. It actually is different than most like standing desks because all four legs lift. So it's a, and, yeah. and it's really well designed in terms of how you can organize cables and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's got like a slot in the back so you can run everything down and like a Velcro. Oh, thing. that's you beautiful. Hook everything to. Yeah, it's pretty it's nice. nice. So uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Bflow. Yeah. Is it bflow.com? Yeah. Uh, I don't know the website. Hold on. <laughs> You paid the money. And well, I wasn't Nisa, prepared to do an ad live. No. Come on. Let's see. I make them uh, all up. Anyway, I have like a chess cold too. So the combination yeah. between like that it's and this go mic. Go Beflow. Go Beflow.com. G O B E F L O.com. I did an ad read one time on the Undefined. Mm-hmm. I feel like Jared was taken back. He like <laughs> chatted to me. He's like, that was fucking incredible. That was like art. Right? So I, I was like shit faced and I like read off of there. I'm like, you know, you need to. Yeah. I did one for warp. I actually did that myself because whatever, you know, I remember yeah, that. The, I the, told you like, I can't do this. So you do it. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> I do it very Roganly because mm. that's the only like fucking point of reference that I have for podcast. Oh yeah. Ad yeah. I listen speaking. to smart lists and some other like non techy ones to get kind of ideas and Sponsored be entertained. I listened to all in, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. We drove to Lake George, which is probably the better part of a five hour drive. And we listen to all in the whole entire way. Imagine yeah. my poor wife having to listen to that bullshit for you, five hours. Yeah. Do you listen to Darknet Diaries? I have. Yeah. So we, we, you should listen to the Jack Resider episode. So he was on ours. 
Uh, I obviously wasn't on his because I haven't gone to jail yet for any piracy. Yeah, his requirement else. is like you have to have been in jail. Yeah, so or, I, I don't or need mostly that. In jail. But uh, yeah. and so I, I forced my anyway. The connection there is that I forced my wife to listen to some Darknet Diaries on the drive before mm. because she loves those murder podcasts, and I'm like, this is like that, but for the internet and tech tech people. And then she's it, it didn't have the same you know, like resonance for her, but. I think it's more important to people that have some frame of reference in technology. Like if you ever because modded a console, there's a cool episode about that. Yeah. Or if you really liked hackers. I've done a lot of something. hardware work. I love hardware. I think hardware is pretty cool and interesting and not so. It's in magic. The, I, it's I, witchcraft. I, yeah. You, you might find this surprising, <laughs> but like being not in the limelight for some of my work is feels, feels kind of nice. It feels protected. I, I haven't been in the limelight for my work for five years. But now you're coming back. Coming back no, hard. I'm I, no, I'm not. You're doing talks. Are you doing talks? You just I've did a talk recently, the entire right? time. Yeah. 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 That's the limelight. I don't talk about yeah. what I do. Talks or work. Yeah, not your day job. Yeah, it doesn't have to be your day job. Work you think I talk about my talk. day job ever? No. I used to a lot. Yeah. But you were in a different position, so I don't think yeah, that's the important part. It's more about kind of Ken than it is about, you know, work for blah de blah and that's still that's all right. I got news for you, boss. It was always about Ken. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been about Ken. <laughs> all right. Do you want to do any more of these hot takes, Mr. I'm ha- I'm Wagner? happy to fucking fire oh, away. Yeah. We've we've got one of the more recent ones that's been going around. Sidebar on the left or right in VS Code. Oh god, I thought you were going to ask me a political question. You already know the answer. No. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sidebar on uh, no 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 sidebar. No, no sidebar, sidebar at all. Ooh. No. Yeah, just hide just that search shit. for the files you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like uh, control P, man. Yeah, control P, exactly. Uh, so, so obviously, I'm going to say left because that's where it like default is, and I've never like consciously moved it to the right. But yeah. like, also, who I, gives a I, I, I like like more recently. I don't know. Back in the day, I used to like click around and be like fucking like da da da, and like more recently, I'm a bit more tactical with things. Like, I will literally just sit there for like an hour and like look at it, and then go do some shit, and then look at it and go do some shit, and then come in like. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like over time, I feel like like when you're like first starting out or first couple of years or whatever, right? You'll go, you'll be like, oh God, I have to refactor this entire fucking thing, right? And then like you come in and, you know, 15 years later, you're like, all right, I'm just going to, you know, go take a poop, make a sandwich, come back, think about it. And then you're like, all right, I could like write like three lines. It's taking me four days to do these three lines, but it fixes everything in like a very like low risk kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, that realizing you'll do that. Yeah, I think that's like experience gives you the ability to realize that work isn't just sitting in front of your keyboard, right? Is that yeah, you're processing that whole time. And that's what companies are paying for. They're paying for your ability to solve problems. They're not paying for lines of code. And I think that is kind of what comes. That's like a metric, though, some places. It is. It is. And it's and it's stupid. Yeah, I've seen dudes get fired over not committing atomically enough. Yeah. Yeah. Number of PRs. I want to be straight with you. You're getting one big ass fucking PR. (laughs) They used to get one big. So that's the difference between like feature dev and fixes. Fixes. Mm -hmm. It'll be like one line after three days. But yeah, you know, feature dev, you'll get like, you know, bug introduction. Fourteen hundred lines after one day. Yeah. But, you know, impact is you can't measure impact. And that's a big argument, I think. Right. Like productivity from a dev across all levels, whatever that means. And none of us can really agree what, you know, what's a junior dev versus a senior dev versus a staff and architect and all those things. In general, we don't really agree on that. Uh, And it's not tenure alone because that's stupid. No, and it's no, not no, lines no. I've, of code seen, I've seen absolute senior devs who've only been in the game for like three years. I know because they job hopped yeah. and played the game and good for them. No, but... no, 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 no. I mean like, 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 like skill tier mm. senior devs. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot sure. of guys who are like super, super talented who like are not even being clo- paid close to what they're worth. Oh, or for like, sure. You know, like also you see these folks who've been at the same company for like 10 years and like stay like 10 hours a day and just fucking don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Of any, necessary you know i mean they just they're just struggling the entire time like with the same kind of problems and shit and you're like damn yeah you haven't learned to be efficient you haven't learned how to find the answers you haven't learned how to learn really or they just don't care or they don't care and they just are like if i'm here 10 hours they're not sharky yeah 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 it's a it's a wide spectrum i think also like like a senior in one place you know senior at fucking you know dickhead.com is not the same as like senior at google.com for sure 
for yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. It's like, like, these titles are not transferable. Like there's places I could go where I'd be a fucking junior dev. Yeah. I mean, there's anybody. Yeah. I mean, maybe not a fucking junior that's dev. That's my but, problem you know, right yeah. now. But <laughs> I'm a mid-level dev at Amazon with 10 years or 11 or 12 years of experience, I guess. Yeah. I'd say no, that's accurate because, leveling yeah. though. I don't know. In my experience, yeah. having no, I'd say that's accurate leveling. Like, for me, do you know YAML me, bro yeah. or no? Well, I'm not. I'm not good at uh, interviewing. Is the problem? Right. Like, Neither am I. But an what are you interviewing yeah. for? Well, nothing now. But like when I interviewed no, 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 Amazon, you need to, like, I got your... Yeah, you. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta be just leverage that network and see. I'm you very can't unskilled, Amazon, as far as I can tell. I'm very unskilled you, and very likable. The process. That's the difference. I need just yeah. friends to get see me in saying? places. You, yeah, yeah, you just gotta. You, it's just it's it's a Riz only play. Yeah, I I wouldn't work at Amazon. I know a lot of people who work at Amazon, and I like them, but I probably wouldn't work there. It's a very specific process. People study to work in Amazon. Like you have to yeah. go through a whole, you're not just people do the whole decode code thing for this, this and that. And it's like, yeah. you know, I've worked on some of the harder problems and not had to deal with that shit. Yeah. Or if I had to deal with that shit, it wasn't the shit that they were asking. It was more obscure algorithms that yeah. I either had to find a library for or fucking or just go or learn at the time when I need it. I know yeah. how to get that information. Yeah. And I think that's a big difference. Like I don't like, have I mean, it like, on demand value to understanding like algorithmic complexity right and things sure. like that like yeah. most of the time you're yeah. not doing this shit apps versus yeah. sites just and knowing then the that app? like combinatorics is a thing is like helpful like you don't yeah. need to know how to do all of it you just need to know it exists for when you hit complex problems like yeah. you know it was probably so, but yeah most of the time we're like move this over a few pixels like that's all we're doing yeah. all fucking day in my career i think it was about like 13 years or so and then i had to figure out combinatorics i was like oh okay I've got to solve this problem. It's called this. All right. That's where I went. Do you guys ever do like lead code dive shit? I did when I started the yeah. Amazon process and I decided it yeah. wasn't for me and I It makes me out. feel so fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. You're like, what the fuck? Okay. I'm okay up to mediums. Hards are hard. And then I'm an idiot. So then I was like, I'm going to opt yeah. out of this one. For various reasons. At no yeah. point in time has it ever resembled anything I've ever done in 15, 20 years of no. software engineering. How yeah. it? I think it's, you know, it's a different skill set. There's like, everyone talks about back end versus front end and like, oh, front end's not real engineers or whatever well, the fuck they want to say. And like, well, they changed that, that shit that, over the last years. Because we don't have to do algorithms or whatever as much, doesn't mean it's not as much engineering because there's so much other shit you have to know. Like, Okay, well, you know algorithms, but can you configure Webpack for me real quick? <laughs> like, fuck you. Like, yeah. <laughs> front that's end the final, infra. That's sucks. the final question in the interview. Mm -hmm. Front end <laughs> infra sucks ass. Webpack actually isn't yeah. that hard, believe it or not. No, but like, if you really just died to dig into it, like, you know, I've wrote like pretty meaty plugins for Webpack before. Everything comes down to just reading the fucking errors mm -hmm. and the docs. Read the fucking manual. The docs and the errors, right? You start Googling yeah. shit. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> right. Now, chat GPT that shit, that's a different story. Yeah, it is. That kind of puts you on a nicer direction. <laughs> then you get a really wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, well, I'm smart enough to know yeah. this ain't it. Yeah. Confidently as shit, too. I got to yeah. say, though, like the jump from like Grunt, or what was the one for a minute? Gulp. gulp. Yeah, gulp. Grunt Gulp. Yeah. To, to Webpack was like, oh, did we really need to do all this? Okay. It was kind of a... Veet is good. Yeah, Veet's good. Yeah. I like Veet a lot. Yep. I'm glad Everybody's you say like, it right. Fuck feet. Use next. And I like next, but I just can't use it. Yeah. I mean, I like next because it puts guardrails into like it, it made CRA like ridiculous and stupid. But it always was. Yeah, it always was. But it's, <laughs> it, you know, I don't know if you went down the path of like sagas and thunk and whatever version oh, of yes, Redux. Oh, yes, I did. Shit. Exactly. You're like, <laughs> why is this happening to me? Someone else made this choice. I guess I got to pretend like they were right and I do had it. one of the original flux implementations mm. it was called McFly it was awesome then, <laughs> well the name is good <laughs> then we switched to alt because we needed server rendering right and my 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 good friends were the maintainers of that and they yeah. some fine Airbnb folks yeah yeah everybody just wants JavaScript's version of PHP and and Python and whatever, you know, basically they want Rails and Django and, you know. You guys been writing Python? I, I used to at National Geographic. I can't do it. I have to have braces. I like Python because it's like language to me. But anyway. I like Python. I've been writing a lot with little AI bullshit. Mm -hmm. Also like some, you know, data exploration kind of shit. I mm -hmm. like it. You Python's want, fun. So 
can I just publicly ask you what's in your jewel? Is it just tobacco or is it something else? No, no, it's just tobacco yeah. right in here. This is this is one jewel with tobacco. This is another jewel with tobacco. Yeah. This is like an elf barber tobacco. This is a, a zen. Yeah. So you got options. You're not fucking around. Yeah. Are you guys <laughs> nicotine pilled? Nope. No. no. Are, we, are you ex nicotine pilled? Nope. Never. I've never smoked a cigarette or had any nicotine in my entire life. I don't think I started smoking until I was about 17 years old. Right. And it was Marlboro Reds. You just went hard. You were like, I want to be a cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually used to, this is funny, I used to get Marlboro Reds, but I would also carry around a pack of Marlboro Lights just for girls at the bar. <laughs> it was a, fucking amazing. Nice. Were these and bars then, um, on the Jersey Shore? Or? Yeah. I've been to the shore. And then, I've been to Seaside and Vineland and what's the one? Wood something? Anyway. Vineland, Vineland is not on Vineland the Vineland and Seaside are completely different fucking things. I know. Well, I've had yeah. reasons to go to both. Okay. No, that's cool. Yeah. So I, I grew up there. I'm in the Jersey Shore right now. I've lived there for 38 years. I need to. I need you to understand how much of a townie I am. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I live Set here right now. Set the stage for me, please. In the town directly next to the town where I was born. Okay. This town that I'm in right now, my wife is from this town. Mm-hmm. It's a mile away from the town in which I was born. My parents still live in that town. So me and her <clears throat> are both from here, live here. We have parents, brothers, and sisters, and cousins all in a five-mile radius. Talking turbo towny shit. Yeah, turbo towny. Yeah. I, I went to the food store the other day and fucking saw my mom randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I, I walked down the aisle. And I walked up, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, get the fuck out of the way. And she's like, I'm like, I'm kidding. What's up? What's up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 it do be like that. I saw my brother in the parking lot of the liquor store the other day. Mm. Did he have the I same? I was walking and he's like, he's like, what's up, bitch? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like this soft ass motherfucker. <laughs> that brings up so many other questions. Like, yeah. Are they all in tech? Are you all in tech? No. How did you get in? How do you go from the shore to tech? When I was a little kid, I loved computers. My dad thought computers. My dad like likes like gadgets and shit. He likes like tech shit. You know, he's 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 tapped in. I could elaborate on that, but I'm not going to. Uh, he's he's he's, he, <laughs> he's tune into fucking... the next episode where we talk yeah. about Ken's dad. No, he's <laughs> fucking tapped in. When we were little kids, he got like one of like those like first like IBM computer kind of things. Mm -hmm. You know, there were like text based games. Oh, yeah. I love those. Like Zork and other less Zork popular ones. Zork and like you fucking drive the, the heavy truck or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you drive like the semi. Yep. You, you remember that game? I, I loved those games. I had an Atari yeah. computer that I set up to the TV. Yeah. And then, yeah. So when I was a little kid, right? Like, I, I that's, that was like, I was like, this is fucking cool, dude. Computers, what the fuck? This is sick. So I like, did that. And then you get to, you get to elementary school. And the first thing that they're trying to do is trying to get you to do Mavis Beacon. I come in, I'm like, <laughs> just destroying typing, right? And so I'm like, fucking sick of typing. And I'm like, yeah, I don't need this. And they're like, listen, you can do whatever you want. So I go and find QBasic. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I go and I get in there. And I'm like doing like fucking visualizations and like gradients and shit. I'm like playing with like math and coding and fucking shit. Dude, it was awesome. I'm like tearing that shit up. And I got really, really into it. And then, like, we get, like, really into, like, like, me and my boys, we were, like, G's. Like, real G's, right? And then, like, like we would sit there and, like, fucking write PHP or, like, code up HTML websites. But, like, also while being G's, which was hilarious. Like, we would make, like, visual basic apps, like, punters and shit like that, little hackers. Yeah. That kind of thing. And, yeah, dude, it was, it was really funny culturally. And then... um. Then I got super into rap music and I became a rap producer for like 10 years. And at the end of that, uh, my mom was like, you have to get a job. <laughs> right. And I went and I looked in the back of a newspaper and the newspaper said like web developer using flash. Oh yeah. Flash. And I was like, shit, I could do that. So I called him up, lied the entire time and spent five years at that place. You know, while everyone else was in college. I was this. I was building all the local restaurants' websites in Flash. You get the little loading bar and some music, and you put your mouse over shit. It's like ting, 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 ting. It's like whoo, right, like fucking. It was awesome. We had fun. Yeah, and then from there, I launched into like tech proper. Like this, this place was kind of fizzling out. So like, I hit up a, a local firm, 
who actually did a lot of work with like New York fashion. And they were like e-com implementers for like Oracle and Salesforce. Now it's Salesforce. It was demandware then. Yeah. And started working with them, doing real things. That's where I wrote Slick Carousel and, you know, took it from there. That's Ooh, how yeah. code happened. That's how code happened. <laughs> ActionScript was like OG, like legit JavaScript back in the day. ActionScript like, could... fucking rules. Yeah, it did a lot. It did a ton. I remember when when like the iPhone came out and it was like, we're not going to support Flash and Flash is dead, shit like that. I was like, all right, fellas, time to switch over to fucking HTML, CSS. We have jQuery and you could do like dot slide down or to fuck, you know. I'm like, I tell you what, it's okay. In time, the animation performance will catch up. It took it forever. It never though. did. Although, like, like, some shit did. If you feel like writing fucking GL shaders, did you see that shit today that fucking guy posted? Mm mm. Mm mm. Oh, God. It was like this, like, oh, GL wait. Yeah, I saw cloud, that. And then he had yeah. the other window, and, like, they started, like, sucking into the each other, like, fucking thing black hole. Going yeah, on. dude. Yeah, I was like, what I did the see fuck? That. Dual window GL particle clouds playing off of each other and betting and shit based on window position dude like what the fuck yeah it was pretty sick actually who has that kind of time i don't give a fuck it was sick people without kids that's who has that kind of yeah time. yeah mm-hmm. so yeah you know you can so just, many yeah. kids are out here fucking busting through the wall like the man <laughs> they're like podcast. daddy daddy <laughs> stop stop it with a versace robe come out here and play with us <laughs> i don't know they I have doubt their that's, own. They're, yeah, they're they have their, their own. own Versace the whole robes. family yeah. has Versace mm. robes. Do you get those from yeah. China? Yeah. No. Versace, yeah, Versace over Gucci. Versace. Well, you got them secondarily through China, though. You I bought don't them from where Versace. this was made. <laughs> you don't look at the tag. I don't. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Tags are irrelevant. That's fair. Yeah, you just. Yeah. Just riding the wave. Keeping it drippy. You know what they're really into? They're into Crocs now. I know. I don't really get it. I know you like them. Do you guys wear Crocs? No, I don't wear Crocs. No. I have. But have you ever worn Crocs? I haven't ever worn mm-hmm. Crocs. Do you know what I'm wearing right now? Crocs. They're not Crocs. Oh, okay. Let no. me let me know what I can have, like some self-respect and then also be I never said there was self-respect, <laughs> but like uh, imagine if you had like a Croc for winter. Okay. So a it's a croc? North Face oh, jacket. Oh, I have oh. seen this or versions of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, it's like a jacket for your feet. Yeah. It's fucking incredible. I might be open to that. It's like yeah, a fancy it's slipper. Dope. Yeah, I've got I'm some fancy fan. slippers. I have yeah. Mohinders or whatever. I'm into slippers. Those are sweet. Mohinders, you ever heard of those? They're like no. wool, boiled wool slipper things, but they're super comfy. And they Does got the like inside a, get gnarly? They breathe, so the boiled wool breathes. Nice. That's the point. Yeah, with those, I don't, I don't know. Do those breathe? I have, yeah, I have no, I mean, stinky, sweaty fine. feet. So I have the, uh, like the lined Crocs, the Crocs with the fuzzy interior. Yeah, dude, those things are fucking biohazards right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's <what laughs> they're I mean. fucking gnarly. You know how gnarly they are, right? Like, like when you wake up in the morning and you go to put your foot in. Yeah, like the, the initial fleece is like hard. <laughs> yeah, from like, like foot gnarliness. My wife, no, 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 but then away. like. So I like, put my foot in all the way and like the toe is wet. I'm like, mm, fuck this. Oh, no. I just kicked it off. I'm like, no, <laughs> Never no, mind. no. Never mind. These bitches have to. Yeah. You just need to off gas a little. <laughs> <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I froze them. I put them in a freezer for yeah, a week. That's what I was thinking. Like put them outside or put them in a freezer or something. I don't know. That's what they yeah. tell you to do with jeans to like kill really? the bacteria. Yeah. They're like, don't wash your jeans. Just put them in the freezer. And that's. I hate. To... I never wash jeans ever. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, you're not yeah, supposed to wash freezer? jeans every time. Yeah, if yeah, you get if you like, wash raw jeans, denim. Like you ruin the fucking jeans. Yeah, like, yeah. Raw denim is meant um, to be just like I'm okay worn with and that, worn but, worn. but putting them in the freezer? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah you want to maintain material? your patina? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I know all about patina. I'm a car guy, so. Is that right? Yeah. Are you a boot guy? Yes, I have some like Red Wings that I've had for like a decade plus and like stuff like that. Oh, man, they must be lovely. They are amazing. They're so great. I fucked around and then got the mock toe originally, which is mm-hmm. a mistake. Yeah, because of that, the the sole's not replaceable. That's like, which good. Yeah, no, I, I got Rangers outside. now though. I'm yeah. about six months in on the Rangers, so yeah, hell yeah, we'll see how they patine up. You know what? Yeah. I just gotta get some Thursdays, and they're fucking actually pretty great. Hmm. Okay. Fair and enough. I got them as part of like a Billy Hargrove Halloween costume. Okay. I don't know who Billy Hargrove is. I'm I'm searching. He's my the dude again. who fucked the kid's mom on Stranger Things. That cool dude <sighs> with the. Remember that guy? Mm. Yes. Do you know what's funny? You know what that kid's mom's name was? No. Mrs. Wheeler. 
Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And he had the flaming chicken, right? Do you have a flaming chicken? His car? I don't know about a flaming chicken. It's a Trans Am Firebird. Yeah, it's yeah. like Burt yeah, Reynolds yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, smoking the bandit. Yeah, You've he's this, cool right? shit. And he's but, at the pool. He's like, what's up, shoddy? So the those are called, they're the last like muscle car. And I thought no, you meant like a flaming chicken decal. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's on the front of the car. Right. The last muscle car. Yes, yeah, so the last muscle car. Explain. It went, well, because it wasn't encumbered by regulation and stuff as much. Uh, oh, because okay. it was like kind of the end. Like a lot of companies were like switching. Do you own because a muscle of, car? I don't. Uh, he would never own a muscle car. I like muscle car. I mean, I grew up around what do you cars drive? and kind of stuff. Um, Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. I'm a Porsche guy. Fucking hot. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's a hot hatch. It is amazing electric obviously and all the things plus my kids can fit in the back it's the first car i've had that my wife actually likes because i even when i had no money i bought like shitty old porsches and then worked on them myself and myself and push start it and whatever you got to do because i was always like i'd rather have a cool car than one that works all the time i don't care yeah yeah my so, neighbor has a 911 and it's fucking very cool yes he had me drive it to his daughter's wedding sweet i was coincidentally drone filming his daughter's wedding and he's like <laughs> well he's, like, hey, he's, he's like i don't mean to put you out but can you do me a favor can you fucking drive this porsche for me what year i was it? like i was like i'll tell you what uh no it's like i don't know maybe like 10 15 years old maybe okay so like a 997 or something i had yeah. one of those i had a 996 997 I've it's fun a bunch yeah I don't, I don't i don't drive cars you don't you don't go places you no just have cars. the food no no i drive trucks oh, oh I, okay. I don't like dragging ass is it's it lifted to the ground no i sort of but then I have a you Land never Rover take it Defender, off of... right? and it has like it has like a um a new one or an old one new one okay it has I mean, like a uh like a hydraulic four system door two door or some shit four door and it's like you hit the button and the shit will lift six inches or some shit. Yeah. And drop six inches. Some, you know, my, just, my car actually yeah. goes up two and a half inches in or for off-road mode. So I've taken nice. it like in, in a wash in Arizona and stuff. So I was historically a Jeep guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. I had a I like, Jeep. I like Wrangler, Wrangler Unlimited, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted a pickup truck. Now my they have the Rampage anti. or whatever the hell the modern version is called. They have the 80s Rampage, oh, and then the name, it's out yeah. now. It is, is a truck. Gladiator. Gl is yeah, that, what yeah, is it called? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, was gonna, I was going to get a Gladiator. They have the 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 Jeep Electric, too. It's like 4 by E. I've heard it's like dog that. shit. Yeah, they said it's like it's like 25 minutes of electric. Oh, yeah, that's not great. Yeah. I yeah. know if it's hybrid in that way and full electric, that's not crazy. Like, even the, uh, we looked at the hybrid Volvo one. It's like the the 90 or whatever and that's like 35 XC90. miles yeah xc90 yeah. it's only 35 miles but that usually covers you you know driving around town or something you're good to go yeah all right, you come out here i'll try golf and then i'll take you for a ride for the tycon and then you'll and you'll see yeah yeah no launch into, mode is fun my wife was a big fan when i was driving his car so mm -hmm. someday well, my wife hated my 911s so she was even just on like, the way to dinner yeah I mean, I guess she liked how people mm. were impressed by it, but she did not like the drive. I she mean, she wasn't took, comfortable. No, nah, we took road trips like down to North Carolina and stuff when we were in DC, and she was like, That's this fucking is, shit. This is not what I thought it was going to be. It's expensive, and I thought it was just going to be like a nice car, but this feels like a race car. That's not a smooth was, ride. That is no, like, it's not. Brr, brr, brr. Yeah, oh. yeah. You feel everything, and it was loud and everything that some it's people pretty sweet, don't like. Though, top down. Mm hmm. Mm. I put on fucking Ty Dolla Sign and drop the fucking roof. I'm like, ah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a 74 914 at one point and I was working at a casino. One of the greatest fun memories that I have in my life of that car would be like three in the morning driving home with the target top off, windows up, heater on, but then just like seeing the clear sky in the desert. It was just That's bananas. It was awesome. Yeah, that car was like, you're just out there like, <sighs> yeah. To the professionals. Thanks, Siri. <laughs> I don't know what's what happening. band is that, dude? This is uh oh, what's my band? It's just a metal yeah. band. It's a Vince Camuto metal band yeah. from Costco because I like Costco. Mm. I need to find. So I had a metal band on my Ultra and it fucking broke. So I've been looking for a quality metal band. The Vince Camuto. I, it was like a two pack. It was like awesome. So I 
American Airlines on blast right now because they lost a bunch of my luggage when uh, when I was mm. uh, going to Italy for a wedding, and uh, so I lost like my bands for this. And I was like, "Well, what am I to get?" I'm like, bands will make her dance. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they actually will, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do, do, you know, do you know what this is? Uh, a bunch of ones. Yeah, this is a certified band from Magic City in Atlanta. Oh, nice. I brought it home. Mm. Okay. I use it as a muse when I'm making rap music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it reminds me why it's, it's, I'm doing it. All right. Uh, greatest rap album ever. Name top top five rap albums. Top five rap albums? Jesus mm, yeah. Christ, you can't do that Five is a lot. Well, Dude, do like a couple at least. Have you guys do not really seen have to High Fidelity? Like... You don't have to be anything. No. Yeah, what uh, do you enjoy? Not not what would everyone say is the... Yeah, but like, like I enjoy a lot show. of what everyone would say. Like obviously people are gonna say like like Carter Three and Thirty Six Chambers. How do you, pick, how do you, how do you even pick yeah, I mean obviously. And then Fat Boy's self title. <laughs> like Illmatic, but like I also like Nostradamus quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Dr. Knockboot. And then um I don't know. There's 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 a lot there. You weren't expecting I was going to come at you like this. But this is like this is what it is. Yeah. We drink. Speaking of rap, did you yeah. guys see the whole thing with uh, Snoop Dogg being like, "Yeah, I'm quitting smoke and bullshit." Like, yeah, and then it became like, "Oh, it's the, a solo stove." A solo stove <laughs> was it? Was that literally just a setup for a solo stove commercial? It, it was. It I was, had heard and it was amazing. Yeah, I heard that he was going <laughs> to launch his own line of edibles, and I was like, "Well, this makes sense." The that fact, made more sense. Yeah. That makes more sense. And then it ended up just I was being worried. A I thought he had like COPD stove. or something. Yeah. I mean Have you seen him perform? I have, but it was 1997 on Lollapalooza. Uh, at Lollapalooza was the only time. I saw I him perform seen. like three months ago. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's good. He's no doubt. Like Do you guys have a solo stove? I do. I don't. They're fucking unreal. I have an They're Uni amazing, pizza yeah. maker. Unis are the best. Unis are incredible. I was to say, so if, you don't, if you don't have a pizza maker. Ooh. Oh, man. It, it, I don't know how cold it gets by you, but by me, it gets pretty fucking cold. So you get the heat deflector. Sits on top. But you don't have. Uh, so did you see that they came out with a pizza maker? Solo stove? I don't think so. Yeah. Solo stove has a pizza maker. A pizza oh, did oven. they? That's nice. Oh, you're saying they did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. didn't know that. Napolitana style. How do you feel? How do you feel about that style of pizza? Napolitana, uh, mm-hmm. that's the best style. Is the best style, no doubt. I'm gonna have to go ahead and hard disagree. Okay, where are you picking? <laughs> and if it's Chicago, you're a liar. I'm from fucking New Jersey. Where do you yeah. think I'm picking? <laughs> Our yeah, pizza. That's fair. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> no, like, like I don't get me wrong. I love a good margarita. Yeah. Right. It's an unbelievable pain in the ass to to make. You know, um, there's just the dough. Everything else is easy. Dough well, the bullshit. dough is the, the dough hydration is a pain in my fucking tits. But mm. like, do you do like San Marzano for the sauce? I do. Actually, we have a pretty long tomato season, so I can usually grow most of them myself. So I do oh, no, San Marzano's no, the... cans. The cans are good the rest cans of the time. But I even like I'll grow my own, boil and peel, and then have basically the same process. Otherwise, oh, it's a lot of work. It's fun though. I have, I have like seven different ways that I make pizza. Okay, and I like the margaritas and the. In the in the blast furnace, but I have a Breville smart oven, yeah, and that does a pretty good job. Okay. I have a stone inside of my regular oven that does yeah. a pretty good job. Have you ever grilled pizza? Yeah, I have actually. That does a phenomenal job as well. It it does its own thing for sure. As long as you can manage the heat so that the bottom doesn't get fucking snorched, right? Yep. But yeah, but I've done. Yeah, big pizza fan. I love all pizza. So, fun fact yeah. is, uh, we're working on moving to Italy actually. You're going to literally move to Italy. Mm-hmm. You kidding really, me? No. Are you Italian? Nope. I'm Irish and German. But I have some Why are you really good. To Italy? Uh, because it's amazing. I just like being there. It's like a great like, Where environment. Where in Italy are you looking to move? Como. Like around Lake Como. Mm-hmm. So the province of Como, somewhere around there. I have some very close friends down around uh, Na- the Bay of Naples. In the, do you know? And Cast- you can just move there. You can just decide to move there. You don't have to have some employment sponsorship. Uh, I make my own money. So, yeah, I mean, as long as you're able Do to you work have remote. to employ Italians? 
Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you can get so well, they thank have. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to get things done. So no offense, homie. Sorry. Yeah. Um, there isn't much internet there. It's hard. No, actually, infrastructure has gotten much better. So there's a lot okay. of that because they've been trying to encourage people to like not move to the major cities or leave altogether. So really, infrastructure is a big thing, and that's improved a bunch over the last five years. You can buy an incredible house in a for, for like two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Wow. Like, I was looking at the the French castles. Yes. Which you can do. Apparently, there's a lot of like bullshit around upkeep and historical. Don't shit. get a crumbling villa, right? Like you can get a normal okay. one, walkable to a bunch of restaurants, 20 just to 30 minutes. It. Yeah, just, crumble. yeah, just take that flex seal <laughs> with you and you're totally fine. But um, <laughs> yeah, so good places, lots of infrastructure, like just not problems. Two, three hundred thousand dollars palatial home no yeah they have like sick fucking trains and shit like that they've approved yeah. they have you can a... also drive a ferrari and it makes more sense and you've saved all the money on your house that it's uh it's okay i have driven a ferrari in italy <laughs> when are you but that's a different story a year and a half summer house by summer uh stay one more school year for the kids and, and you then... don't have any requirement like what, what do you get like a resident visa so it's a couple different things they have a digital nomad visa they don't have a process for it because italy right now uh oh you're gonna be like fucking levels but they do have resident i will i want to rent at first but if i had to buy then we might go down and then you get a residence visa can you speak any italian uh allora that's my favorite italian (laughs) word allora uh when i'm there for a bit i speak enough to get by my wife actually speaks italian Uh, is your wife italian no she is not she's polish but and from michigan so that's a whole other thing but she randomly took Italian in college and became good. And then we started traveling oh, there. Good choice. And it just was, yeah. Are you going to establish an olive farm immediately? Uh, if I'm smart, I will. You can buy an olive farm. Should. I have actually yeah, seen for sale olive orchards and, and wineries Citrus. and all that stuff. Yeah. Like they the grow life. a lot of stuff there. So, yeah. Yes. Especially this could that be a real region. Thing. I mean, let's. That's exciting. Yeah. I know, and then you're then you're in the fucking Euroverse, right? Mm-hmm. Which is like you know, everything's going to like Germany's going to like going to like fucking Ohio. So I'm a big yeah. European football fan too. So like 40 minutes soccer, to Milan. yeah, 40 minutes yeah. to Milan. My number two team is Inter Milan. So like I can drive down there, join the ultras, and just get fucking nuts. I love it. I like Amaro's. I am yeah. Huh. There's nothing wrong with it. My kids that's like ambitious. pizza. My kids like pizza and gelato every day. I mean, that's not hard. And here's the funny thing is I can eat pasta, pizza, gelato every day. And I, I always weigh less after when I come back. See, I have the actual real opposite food. problem. I make carbonara for myself like three times a week. And uh, we talked about this on Twitter because I, yeah. I know a lot about this. I was like, use the bucatini. It's a fucking level up for your Bucatini's carbonara. Bucatini is lovely. I love Bucatini. So good. You know, I was just at the supermarket the other day trying to find it. You know, I I, I fucked up the other day and got angel hair. Mm -hmm. I didn't get angel hair. Mm -hmm. Somebody else got angel hair. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make this Alfredo with angel hair. And it was like devastating. The shit just fucking absorbs the sauce. Angel hair is for very light butter sauces, like seafood. uh, What is it? Regular, Uh, like burrito, spaghetti. That'll do. But like, yeah, yeah, that Bucatini for the the Amatriciana, that shit was fucking unreal. Calcio Pepe and Carbonara, you mm-hmm. need like some nice Calcio hearty. Pepe is one of my favorites. Yeah. Seven Minute Bad it's Boys. It's so easy. <laughs> Seven Minute Bad Boys? Like that movie with Will Smith? No, no, no. Like you boil it very, very shortly for. Oh, you want a little this, more. This fellow, have you heard of him? Al Dente? Yes. <laughs> Al Dente. Yeah. I love Al. Mine. Al knows what's up. Especially yeah. if you're going to yeah. toss it back in a hot pan. You want to get a That's little more right. Al Dente and then. Ah, yeah. ah, I know where you're going. The pancetta. Yeah. Oof. Yes. No, no, no. I use the, the, the what is it? The guanciale or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the one that Pork is? Gel. Yeah, the guanciale. And I was uh, able it's to a source red sauce that. Version. I have that. I have that shit in my fridge as we speak. I'm able to source that locally because I live in Italyville. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so. you know, oh, for sure. And I, you know, I'm not afraid of a pork roll. No, you yeah. know about pork roll. I do know about. I. Honestly, I've been to Jersey. I, I made I made carbonara like a month ago with fucking bacon. I don't care. Yeah, if you got, you do what you got to do, right? Yeah. I'm really in here for the uh, uh, what is the cheese? 
It's not Parmesan. It's the uh, uh, Pecorino. Uh, Pecorino. Pecorino. Right. Yeah. I'm here for that Pecorino and fresh grated mm. black pepper. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. You motherfuckers are making me hungry right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get the drinking and now you're hungry. And like, I don't know. That's what... usually how that goes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you see my little bitch meals that I made? Little bitch meals? Yes. Mm hmm. Wait, yeah. I so I, that, the, I made the like line meal of planning. all that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been eating those, and that those are like firmly 550 calories each. Yeah. So it's left a little to be desired. <laughs> yeah. I broke like today. I got that fucking Pepe. hamburger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five guys, though, is worth it. Shaq appreciates your purchase, just so you know. My wife did not appreciate the purchase. Oh. <laughs> did you know the hack for Five Guys is that you can get extra bacon for no cost? Like, I did not know that. Yeah, like, yeah. How do you do that? You ask for extra bacon and it, like you give your toppings and you say extra bacon and they don't charge you. It's amazing. Well, isn't that no, the same for right. anything? If you asked and they didn't keep no, it's, it in. That's just how it is. Like, like every time. No, you go add extra bacon enough. other places. They're charging you. They're charging you 100%. Yeah. So that's the hack for there is that you can get extra can bacon. Can you get it on the side and then just eat some bacon? Extra. I used to work above a Five Guys in D.C., and I got it far too often. So I always knew, now, like, if I, I don't need it. Correctly, a Five Guys is a DC franchise. They're a Virginia or something. They're from the area. East, East Coast, for East sure. Coast for sure. It's sure been out here, here for quite some time, but yeah, uh, it started there. Yeah. So you guys have Jersey Mike's? Yep. Oh, yeah. Fucking love Jersey Mike's. I'm like I, a mile from the original one. Oh, that's oh, nice. nice. I know all the dudes who like run it and shit, Makes like sense. the owners and everything. It's fucking cool. We got to go back to burgers, though. Hold on. So Five Guys are yeah, in go and back. out. <laughs> Five guys are in and out. That's not oh, even a competition. Man. Five guys. Mm. Yeah. In and out is trash. You heard it here first. You're yeah, so you know wrong. What? I'm going to go Good. ahead and echo that. You're so wrong. Yeah. Because hey, have everyone you seen the... fucking all... Cali bros, what? Fucking yeah. in and out, dude. It's the best fucking burger. And then because you go it's like and you $4. Have it, like, this it's is incredible. fucking, what the fuck is this? Yeah. This is like, it's, it's fresh. Ray Rogers. It's like, it's not any better. Chopped chilies. It's like... Chopped chilies, animal style. No. Amazing. Okay. No, bro. You if you add a bunch of styles triple double animal style. Yeah, if you so, add a bunch of shit to it, then that's hold on. that's not equivalent. Fuck you guys, right? right? <laughs> Fuck in and out burger. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, wait. Have you seen the burger show? The first we feast no. shows. Okay, you got to watch that if you love burgers because it's amazing. And there's one where they basically like so it's West Coast dude, East Coast dude, and they do they make their own Shake Shack and they make their own In and Out, and they're like, okay, yeah, we'll kind of trade back and forth. And then we're like, now let's make the ultimate burger. Shake Shack has the better quality meat, 100%, no doubt. That's why it's more expensive. Shake Shack is delicious. Shake Shack is good. Shake Shack's delicious. And they make it in an out style, though. So they do a Shake Shack burger in an out style. And animal I learned style? Animal style means before you flip it, you put a smear of mustard on there, and then you sear mustard. That's all animal side. style is? I That's, thought that was like the orange well, it's the sauce, sauce. and, and Yeah, some it has the sauce. Pickles and, and onions some, or something. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the extra sauce, the special sauce. And then um, grilled onions normally, but I throw on some chopped chilies because I don't. I remember around. like eight years ago, I got off a plane in SFO, mm. and I had to I had to go somewhere close, right? It was like San Bruno, like same fucking town, right? Yeah. And I asked him. I said, uh, "I have got to try In and Out. I have to see what this is all about." And mind you, I was drinking the entire time on the plane. <laughs> Surprise. Imagine getting off a plane. This is my drunk surprise site. Yeah, this is my surprise. Imagine face. drinking and getting off a plane, and then you go to In and Out and you're unimpressed. Hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know what you it's did gotta wrong. It's got to be fucking mid. I don't know what you did wrong. Yeah, it is very mid. It's better than fucking Arby's burgers, and you were willing to do that. Well, so I've never had an Arby's burger in my life. I just wanted Man. to have it on the basis of yeah. fucking Keenan and Kel. Right, right. That's fair. I mean, I, yeah, I, I've I never, would try. I don't it. good though. There is an Arby's a mile and a half from my house, and I've never eaten Arby's in my life. Mm. <laughs> I mean, a beef and cheddar. I, mean, I, I like their roast beef and I like their fries. That's yeah. pretty good. Well, I, I like their old fries, so I'm old school. I hated when they make the curly their fries. crispy fries. Yeah, curly fries are okay. Their original greasy fries were good to me. I like greasy fries. That's why in and out not, or not in and out curly? Uh, Five Guys fries are delicious because they're greasy as fuck. They're like a giant Burger bag of fries. King's the king so of fries, more, right? and you know it. Nobody's fucking with Burger King's fries. Chick-fil-A waffle I, fries. What I, about waffle I fries? Think that's you fuck a, with those? A, yeah. I fuck Burger with Chick-fil-A Chick heavily. The, is some of the better fries. And I think that's like a, a little known thing. Like most people shit on Burger King. but No, Burger King fries. Yeah. And Whopper, dude, if you had a fucking Whopper, it's like the most unbelievable thing it's that good. fucking yeah. ever happened. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. Even the I, Impossible Whopper was good. And I, I don't even. It is. I don't even know why. Yeah, that's true. Their their Impossible is good. I don't even know why like anybody talks about McDonald's anymore. I only go to McDonald's because my kids make me sometimes. That's so, it. for breakfast. I have I have a a low key winner for you. Have you ever had a McChicken with cheese? No. Mm-mm. Spicy McChicken or just regular? Just regular McChicken with cheese, dude. It'll okay. change your fucking life. Mm-hmm. It sounds so simple. It does. She's giving me the food order right now. We're ordering from a local establishment. She asked, uh, should she get the fish tacos or the Nashville hot salad? And That's I don't know cool. if you can tell, but I'm kind of an anti salad kind of guy. <laughs> okay. But Nashville hot is good. Nashville hot Nashville hot's delicious, thing. but yeah. and then it's a salad. Right. Like, do you want a shit salad later or do you want to have these fish tacos? That's basically what it is. <laughs> do you fish want tacos. a shit lettuce? Yeah, I'd go fish tacos all day long. Is Are yeah. they fried or grilled? Fried. Oh, fish tacos. 100%. Yeah, yeah. fish tacos are fucking unreal. Don't, you know, don't front. You just want something crunchy? Go fish tacos. Don't, you should be don't... eating my meals that I made, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a silent mm-hmm. vote. And just seems unappreciated. I don't, I don't, Daddy I, spent <laughs> too much time on the podcast. So mm-hmm, I just realized, yeah. so I looked at a previous order. It was like an order it again. And this is, this is unreal. So they have, they have tater tots here mm-hmm. and hers has, has short rib tots <laughs> and mine has uh, my thing that I order has disco tots. Do you know what disco fries are? No, I know what a disco so, nap is, but. So, yeah, disco stick, right? Whatever. Disco fries in New Jersey is if you go to a diner, they'll give you fries with gravy and cheese on them. Oh, so it's poutine. poutine. Yeah. It, yeah, it's basically American like poutine. poutine, but it's like New Jersey poutine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I fuck with poutine. Have mm-hmm. you guys been to a New Jersey diner? Probably. Mm-hmm. I have. I've Probably. <laughs> well, unreal. I mean, we could have a whole other episode about my time in New Jersey. I had it's like a Chrome trailer, and you go in. Yeah, and yeah. There's like fucking eighty three thousand things on the menu. For sure. Do you know what the Palace of Depression is? No. Yeah. See, that's how much more I know about New Jersey. I'm just. The saying, fuck whoa. is the Palace of this Depression? Google it. It's like this whole thing made of mud that was made during the Depression, and uh, and was in the movie the- Eddie and the Cruisers. What do you know about that, Eddie and the Cruisers? Not a goddamn thing. New Jersey. It's not just about the seaside Jersey oh, Shore motherfuckers. The yes. But it is like. A That's whole actually new... kind of fascinating. You're welcome. That's huh. what I'm here for. I, have... I think we're going to have to have a part two. If I can yeah, lock I have you no down. Idea how long this has actually been going on, but I feel time. like more than an hour now because I cut out and came back. One hour so it doesn't and tell 20 me the minutes. real time. One hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so we can probably. We'll wrap this. up. Do you guys want to part two this? Yeah, I want to part two this. I 100% yeah. want to part two this. Are you going to react to Miami, this. by the way? I yeah, I think so. I, I submitted my CFP. And they're all obviously going to accept you because you are. I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually getting a little fucking worried. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Worst well, comes to worst, we'll I'll probably be there. Last we'll just show up. Both of us can stay on uh, Dax's couch. I have claimed we'll, it, but I'll share we'll it with you. We'll set up a it's table totally next to Prime and Theo and be like, fuck these guys, and we're going to talk. <laughs> I'm totally you know them? Prime. They're nice guys. Yeah, yeah. No, Prime's I, been yes. on a couple times, yes. so we're friends, I guess. I'm, I'm assuming we're friends. Them, but, I'm, yeah. Prime's a good guy. Have you seen him in person? No. Mm-mm. He's way than like Luke's? taller and handsome than you think he would be. Yeah, it's all that work. And he's like, bah, yeah. bah, but then yeah, you like, yeah, see yeah. him, and you're like, oh, it's like a fucking normal kind of chill guy, like you know. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah, cool. good, good fucking guy. Theo yeah. too. Theo's tall as fuck. Yeah, well, that mm. I can guess. That checks I get out. that. Yeah, yeah. You can no, see no, that. no. Yeah, like he's like egregiously tall. You're like Jesus, he's like fucking six Christ, five tall. You. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not tall. How tall are you? Yeah, five seven. I'm like 5'10", but I look 5'7", because I'm fucking three and a half feet wide. <laughs> Listen, so if you're not wearing All that right. robe the entire time we're there, I don't want to even go. Yeah, we'll we'll get the same robes and we'll show up. Mm-hmm. Dude, we should all do that and then sit by the pool. That's what I did the first day. You want to hear a funny story about React Miami last year? What's that? Okay, so I show up, right? And I get off the plane. The cats were already there, right? Like, Chanel was there and, uh, yeah. you know, a couple other, yeah, like David Corsi was there and shit. And... Um, yeah, yeah, there were a couple folks pulled up, right? So they're all outside at the pool, just chilling on their computers and shit like that. And I fucking roll up with like carry on luggage. I'm like, let's get fucked up, right? Mm-hmm. Right, I pull up and get fucked up. 
we just eat food and drink. Like I'm just slaying drinks. I have a signature drink called the Hoochie Daddy Punch, right? It's like mm. Pinot Grigio <laughs> with like peach schnapps and some other shit in it, right? So <laughs> that all, sounds like a It's headache. a very summery kind of drink. Right? Yeah, so I'm for sitting sure. there, we're, we're all fucked up. We're having a good time. And I'm like, whoo. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I got to get ready for this like speaker dinner thing. I'm like, uh, I'm going to head back to the room. So I go to the room and I fucking fall asleep. <laughs> I'm like too mistake. drunk. I fall asleep, right? For sure. I wake up at midnight to like fucking 83 missed calls from my wife, dude. She's like, what? she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Furious, right? So I like call her and I'm like, I'm like, hey, I am so sorry. I'm like, I fucking was just chilling at the pool with Sunil and passed out. And then she's like, you motherfucker. Da -da -da. And like, dude, it was like this whole thing. And um, I hit I hit them up. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, we're out. I'm like, all right, I'll be there in five minutes. I took a shower. I fucking dipped out. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Back <laughs> at it. I fucking love Miami. I want to get rich at Jason. I'm ready for that. That's like the fourth or fifth time that's happened to me in Miami. Okay. <laughs> so me that, and her okay. went out and got all fucked up one time. And I punched a stop sign. Hmm. And then Feels we passed out. This was like the night before a cruise. Like, you know, you have that like day before a cruise in Miami. Yeah. We like had that. And like, we're, we're like, we woke up and we're like, oh no, we fucking blew our night in Miami. And then we're like, wait, hold on a minute. It's 9 15 PM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a shower and go fucking crazy. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, we should wrap this up. We can definitely do a part two. Uh, is there anything you want to plug or mention before we end? Not at all. Okay. Just just giving you the opportunity. All right. Cool. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone, for listening. If you <laughs> like it, please subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Boom, 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 boom.